nerds. So it's been a while. I thought I would take you on a tour of my pencil case. So let's go ahead and unzip it and get to chatting. So I have here a, I think it's a Bungu Paku and I've had it for about five or six years. Like I've had it since the first time I went to Japan, which is eight years. I have had this eight years and it gets used every day. It goes everywhere with me. It's been across the world and across the country with me. I mean, this bag has really seen some damage, but it's held up incredibly well. You wouldn't even know how used it was except for a few stains and um, the tag looks a little bit old and it's made of ripstop nylon and it's really taken some of use. So I really, really like this pencil case. And if you're looking for a pencil case recommendation, this would be it. And on it, I have various charms that I've collected along the way. And it's a double zip pencil case that opens up like a book. And inside are three four main compartments, I guess. You have the front compartment here, which is mesh and it can hold taller pins. You have this little book page flap here, which I use to hold my papa's, my grandfather's uh, mechanical pencils. And I don't actually ever use these. These are more like a good luck sort of thing for me, sort of keeping a little bit of family, remembering my family history, uh, wherever I go and whatever I draw. I do keep some of my favorite mechanical pencils in the front or my most commonly used ones. I have a blue mechanical pencil that I think used to have pink lead in it, but now it has just normal lead. So I need to switch that out. And I'm always trying out new mechanical pencils because I'm really hard on my pencils and I tend to ruin them or blast through them. So um, one day I would really like to do a big overview of my favorite recommend recommended brands. But for something like, like mechanical pencils, I really feel like I need more than like a week's worth of use for me to be able to recommend it to someone. I also have a old color eno and you can tell it's old because the grip's all nasty color eno uh filled with the soft blue lead in 0.7 as well as a pentel graph gear with a japanese grip on it and i've had this graph gear for like 10 plus years it's seen a lot of use but it's not my favorite pencil anymore and the reason for that is it's all aluminum it's really really sturdy it doesn't have any give so it's starting to wreck my hands which is one of the reasons why i put this grip on and i wish i knew uh, every time i go to like san francisco or every time i go to japan i always buy these kind of jelly grips i wish i knew who made them. I wish I still had the packaging to even show you guys. I don't. Um, if I dig them up next time I go to San Francisco though, I'll show you guys. Cause I really like these grips. I really recommend them. They're cheap. They come in a package of five and they just do a really good job sort of protecting my hand. In fact, I have one on my um, tablet stylus as well, but this is an all right mechanical pencil. They're a little bit pricey. They're cool because you can change. There's like a lead indicator on the side and you can change if you unscrew it a little bit you can sort of well this one has seen some better days for sure but you can you can change the loop on it so that it tells you what lead's inside I keep B lead in this and I use this to pencil over my blue lines when I'm doing comics and I have a big comic supply overview where I kind of talk about that a little bit more and I never use the eraser in this thing in fact it is now permanently fused with the cap because I keep other erasers around. And what's cool about this is if you're the sort who likes to carry your pencil in your pocket, you can retract the tip. So I will say these sort of mechanical pencils, drafting pencils, they look really profesh. You look really profesh when you're look, using them. People are like, oh, are you an artist? But they are so hard on your hands. Now for years, I used a inexpensive Faber-Castell uh, grip 1347. It's all right. I actually picked this up when I was in Toronto for TCAF from the University of Toronto bookstore. It's all right. It doesn't have enough give. And this grip is just really for gripping. It's rubberized. It's not for, it's not really to protect your hand. On that note, I have a big Dr. Grip in here, which I really like them. In the US, it's hard to find the mechanical pencils for these. They sell a lot of the gel pins and the ballpoint pins. And I really need to fill this with some lead that I'll like, but it has a really nice gushy grip on it. The problem for me is it's just kind of big. I have really small baby hands. It's just kind of big for my hands. 
And then in here, I have just kind of a Mod Podge of stuff, usually a lot of inking, erasers, that sort of thing. I have a Pentel Icy, which is a really inexpensive mechanical pencil, but I actually really like it a lot. It's got this kind of serrated, and my camera won't pick it up, a serrated grip on it that's cushy enough and it's lightweight. And because it's plastic, there's a little bit of give to it. So um, I can get a little more expressive. In it is HB or H lead, depending on what I have handy. And I use this when I'm penciling my blue lines on seven inch Kara pages. And then of course, I keep a myriad of leads in here. This is particularly handy when I'm doing shows and I'm blasting through blue lead. I keep a spare blue lead pencil because again, it shows when I'm on a tight deadline. If I run out of lead in this, I switch over to this one and then I just refill them both at the same time. I have a 0.7 that's filled with red lead. This is a Sakura of America, 0.5, sorry, not 0.7, um, 125, it's okay. Um, these are just kind of nice little standard mechanical pencils. There are metal and plastic parts to it and it has my Pintel red lead in it. I also keep, I keep a lot of erasers. I have a Creative Mark white, white Stroke. I swear by these. I love these erasers. You can get them through Jerry's Artorama. They're very soft vinyl erasers and they're less prone to smearing. And what's really nice is that they're soft enough that they don't pick up my inks. So um, I usually allow my inks to cure for 24 hours before I erase, but these are even, you know, even though I do that, these are even gentler on them than some of the other erasers I've tried. So I don't have to bump my contrast up as much when I do digital corrections. I also keep a couple of Pentel Click Erase erasers. These are really easy to find. You can find the refills, refills for them as well, but sometimes it's just cheaper to buy a new one. And I hate that. I wish, you know, if you want us to be more eco-savvy, please make your refills affordable and easy to find. But I have a couple of these. Uh, you can get these at Walmart. You can get these at Walgreens. You can get them on Amazon. You can, get, you can get them at some art supply stores. I like these a lot better than the Mars erasers. It has the Pentel high polymer white eraser in it, which is a really nice white eraser. And if you can't find the white stroke, I recommend the Pentel high polymer white eraser. And it's just a vinyl eraser that's quite gentle. It, used, it's, it reminds me a lot of the old mono erasers that included PVC in them. The new ones don't, and they're more prone to smearing. On that note, I have a mono knock erase, which is just kind of, it's like a factus eraser. I like it better. It has a mono eraser in it. It uses a, a spring inside, and I used to use a radar knock seed eraser or a seed radar knock eraser. Um, and what I hated about that, and you guys can see that in some of my Inktober videos from this year, is as I'm erasing, I bear down with a lot of pressure and it pushes the eraser in. What's nice about the mono knock is it doesn't matter how much you push, it's not gonna shove that eraser back in. So it's actually more useful. And I like the little rubberized grip and they come in various colors. So I got pink, kind of goes cutely with my blue. Not that any of my stuff is intended to coordinate. I care more about function than I care about cute. I also have in here a knock e eraser. This is made by Mitsubishi or Mitsubishi. I don't like this one as much. It just doesn't erase as nicely as the mono, but it also has a mechanism that keeps it from getting shoved back in. And I also have a small mono zero eraser. It has a 0.23 teeny tiny little eraser and you can get refills for these. And it comes with this long plastic stick so that your eraser doesn't get kind of lost inside. This is great for just teeny tiny corrections. And then, and I'm sorry, it's gross in there. I keep, sometimes I keep like um, color pencils in here because I like sketching with color pencils and I usually use Prismacolor. I used to use Blick color pencils when I had a Dick Blick nearby. Um, I don't care for the Jerry Soho color pencils. I, I just think they're awful, but these have nice soft cores inside. And yes, they are kind of prone to breaking, but if you use a nice sharp Kum eraser, and I really, really recommend this brand. It's K-U-M. I know how it's really pronounced. I refuse to do it. Um, this is a magnesium eraser. They're fairly inexpensive, but they last forever. And I have several of their um, sharpeners because I love them so much. This one's a nice heavy brass one. This one's a lightweight aluminum one. I have tiny little single hole ones that I'm looking for and not finding, but that's my key to using Prismacolor pencils for sketching and not 
not like constantly snapping your lead inside. And then, you know, don't drop them, obviously. I also have in here a Pigma FB. These are waterproof um, liner pins. They come in three sizes. FB is the fine brush. MB is the medium brush. And BB is the big brush. And the big brush is really cool because it's kind of like having a Copic super tip with Copic proofing. Do not have one in here though. And I also have a Kurotake Fude Gokochi, which is a, another brush pin. Fude usually refers to brush pins or sign pins. And this is a water-based, a dye-based brush pin, but I like inking in my sketchbook with these over my blue lines. And then I have a Uniball Signo. These are my favorite for white corrections. Um, a lot of people like the Sakura Jelly Rolls. They're okay. I think they're prone to clogging. I have the best results with the Uni Signo, and I've used those for like 10 plus years now. Then over here, I have, I have a lot of click erasers. Um, I have a couple of the Pintel pigment-based brush pins. These are actually the same size. One of them's a little dry, so it's prone to dry brushing, and the other one has a little more ink in it, so it's what I use when I want a nice solid line or a nice solid fill. And you can buy the refills for these. Um, you can get them on Amazon. They're a little expensive and they don't really save a whole lot of plastic, but you know. Anyway, that was my 2018 tour of my pencil case. That's everything I carry with me um, all the time. It's what I use in my sketchbook. It's what I use when I make comics. So these are all the things I'm currently using and I'm currently loving. Let me know in the comments below what you have in your pencil case. What do you use? What do you love? What do you recommend? Am I missing out? Um, or did I introduce you to something that you're excited about? All of this is pretty kind of basic, bare bones, aimed towards black and white. So if you have a pencil case that's geared towards creating color on the go, show me that as well. Maybe you have one of those multi-pencils in your pencil case to do multi-pencil, uh, multi-color sketches. Anyway, I look forward to seeing what you guys are carrying in your everyday carry. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I carry in mine. Bye guys.